guys happy monday if you are listening from 6 a.m let me know in the comments because oh well that's when this is coming out but i'm so excited to get into our topic for today which is fasting once again but today's a little bit different today's more casual and we're just going to be going over fasting 101 but the update <laughs> So this week, my update for you guys is how the week went. But before we get into that, let's get into prayer. Dear Lord God, we come before you today to thank you for another week of blessings for another year to make changes and to become who you want us to become and to prosper in the life that you wish for us and the purpose that you have given us and the path that you want us to take. Dear Lord God, we thank you for loving us and we thank you for allowing us to see another day where we can be your children of God. Okay, amen. I said okay before I said amen. But let us get into this fasting week one, what it looks like. Let me just tell you guys, week one was faith realizations and God truly showing me who I am from the jump, from the brink. Like straight off the bat, he was just like, this is who you are. And unfortunately, you didn't realize it until today, but this is who you are. And I had a lot of like hiccups in life that didn't even tell me this is who I was becoming, but this is who I was, past tense, because we're changing it. But so fasting day one and the entire fast is basically in the New Testament from matthew to as far as we can get in 31 days um but i wanted to go through my expectations versus what reality is which is one my expectations was this is gonna be a breeze i did this a week what is 31 days and let me tell you from my perspective that was the dumbest thought that i could have I mean, guys, when I tell you it turned from one week to like 80 days, like it just seemed like 80 days. The hours were longer. My thoughts like when let me tell you this, guys, when Satan is against you, which is all the time, but he pushes even harder when you are devoting time to God. Like, I am being completely honest with you guys. In my regular day life, I eat once a day, maybe, max. But, not even max, I'll like, maybe do two oh, a day. Depends, like it really depends on how I feel. I'm not much of an eater, but let's just say like that one meal really packs in a punch, but when i tell you i started the fast it was just like i wanted everything i was tempted to literally eat everything things that i don't crave at all i don't eat red meat at all and i was being i was craving roast beef i was craving bacon i was craving burgers i was craving so much stuff that i would not crave in my regular mundane life and which that should be every day that we are uh given time and showing god how much we love him but the point is he was the devil was attacking me non-stop non-stop i have never seen any attacks like this and my stomach was growling i just was like okay focus 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 when it was time to do my devotions i felt clear i felt not hungry anymore i felt great but as soon as i you could it's like i don't know if you could feel it but as soon as you exit out of god's presence it all comes back and even in god's presence like i would be reading the scripture and like these thoughts would start coming into my head and i'm like and every two seconds i have to stop myself and pray to god and be like god release these thoughts relinquish uh the negative energy that's trying to come into my head i ask and rebuke you to ask you to rebuke the devil from this space this area from me i ask you to cloak me in the holy spirit so that i can be awake and vigilant 
and ready for when the devil has something for me so that I can like so that I know that I am fully within the spirit and are ready to attack um, back and so temptation has been really killing me but also it's the reality that our flesh is so weak I mean deplorably weak I am um, so like the last fast that I had uh, in the summer was about four to five days I think yeah it's five days and I had the only exceptions that I had was when I got hungry I would drink cranberry juice and wheat thins um which commemorates something special for me and so I felt I felt filled but just enough to get by but this time it was just like green juice um fruit juice and that's it uh and water with that being said it was just like super duper 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 tough to even like go about the day and say oh I'm just I'm not gonna eat anything um and it's also hard because in scripture Jesus talks about like not letting people know that you're fasting, not letting people know what you're doing because only God will award those that hide um, and pray in secret and let the award be shown. But at the end of the day, I wanted to share this journey with you guys so that you can know that it truly does work. And I'm not going to go into detail, high depth and detail about what me and God talked about, but I say talk, I meant the scripture told me, which was God telling me. Um, I'm not really going to go into depth with that, but there are a few things that I realized that I, that he revealed to me that it just wasn't making sense. It just wasn't making sense in my life. And so those realizations kind of hit hard like in like just daily readings um my daily devotion as well kept hitting me hard um i don't mind letting y'all know my daily devotions because i can put the book in the link if i see it on amazon if i find that book on amazon i'll link it in the description box but so like just a devotional lesson in general was like treat everybody with loving kindness uh respect honey um, do another like how you would want to be treated. Another day was focusing on prioritizing God within your life. Another day was uh, stop criticizing, stop judging people, focus on your own issues, which was revealed to me the day before in Matthew. Another one was when giving to the needy and doing good, you shouldn't talk about it. Uh, believe, have faith, continue to love God because he sacrifices one and only son for you. Uh, just going through serve others Jesus definition of success is being of service and guiding others um if your brother and sister sins against you only talk to them which that one was very crazy so someone did something that I didn't like that day and I do my devotions at night and so it was like I completely forgot what I learned in the scripture like a few days ago and it just it just popped up again fasting day seven and it was like bring your problems to that person talk to that person about what they sinned against you with and after you do that then let it go and that day i went to my friend and told them what this person did to me i went to my boss and told them what this person did to me uh i went to my uh office mate and told them what this person did to me and i was just like what am I doing? Like, I just learned about this and I'm doing it right now. Like, it just makes no sense. So, it just keeps showing me, like, the patterns and bad habits that I have in my life, which is one, gossiping about my problems. I need to stop it. Oh, I don't know if I hit the mic just now. I think I did. So, apologize. But, yeah, I just need to stop. But anyway, just that devotional in itself was blessing with me uh, God was blessing me with so many gems and changes that I need to have in my life. And so, going into the scripture, we started off with Matthew. Oops, let me grab this. We started off with Matthew. Um, I went through the whole book of Matthew during the first seven days of fasting. And this is honestly my first time reading um, the New Testament in its full 
aspect and truly like taking into consideration all the things that I should know and the things that I should learn from the New Testament because you guys know that we started off in Genesis and we kind of focus in on what and who God was before the Son and I think that's very crucial. I genuinely feel like that's very crucial in my heart but I, if you'll notice on social media, I've been posting mainly New Testament, um, new verses that I've been learning uh, in Matthew. And of course, we went through these verses before um, in church and stuff like that. But seeing it for yourself is a completely different thing. And that's another reason why a fast is really good is because seeing God at work and seeing his information for yourself, it makes you feel different. Like the pastor might be preaching about something else, but you can interpret it and apply it to your life in a different way, which is very crucial and a reason why just going to church isn't enough. Um, whether that be online or in person, whichever one you choose to do, but having your own quote unquote church, maybe with friends, um, and just like analyzing the word and seeing how that word applies to everyone differently it would be mind-blowing just to see how everything works out and so a lot of things that i learned from matthew in this first week and let me just tell you guys it was crazy first uh entering into matthew 4 chapter 4 and realizing that i'm reading this book i'm reading these books while my fast but jesus was also going through a fast and there were a few rules that I realized was so important in my fast. And it was, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And at that point, it really encouraged me because I was like, I am in this time, I'm supposed to be being fed by the word of God. And so that's how I started to view it. And still, I also noticed that at the end, Jesus was hungry. They mentioned it. It didn't make it seem like, oh, he was hungry fine after the fast like he did not need any food any sustenance no he was hungry and so it makes me feel better to know that i am hungry um obviously i'm not jesus and also um looking at jesus separated himself from the world he went into the desert he went to the animals um i can't i can't do that and so obviously it's gonna be a lot harder always being around people people who's eating drinking uh food smells suddenly come into my nose when i'm walking around like it's just a lot harder but trust me you'll definitely get there it's it's a mind-blowing experience when you see the things that you're doing and god absolutely consistently revealing things to you and so the other was it is also written do not put the lord your god to the test and i did that so much when i was younger and i sat there and i was just like i'm sorry i'm so sorry because at the end of the day, and I made this post on social media, and I was like, you can't test the truth. You can't test the uh, answer key. You can't test the person that knows all the answers. Like, that's just not smart. Um, I think it's just, you don't test. I personally don't test my earthly father, so I'm not going to test my heavenly father if I know that they are know all the answers, they're wise, they have, well, God has unlimited answers, powers, uh, and I, I, I just, I don't know how I fathomed testing him. And it's like, you, you are, you're so caught up in your emotions and in how you feel, you're willing, you're about to say anything and it's just like, no, we're not going to say anything. It's not, that's not how it's going to go. And so also the other rule was worship the lord your god and serve him only which i feel like i had a realization that that's what we're all trying to do as hard as we can um and and we all have rough days uh today my pastor said that we all have rough days like not not the prophets in the bible that talked to god one-on-one rough days we all have rough days and so i kind of would beat myself up when i realized that i was being tempted and that i was giving in and honestly there was one part where i was just not feeling well and so i had to take the week off um this week coming off also it's the time of my so i'll be super weak and so i had to take the week off 
but that does not mean that the scripture will not be stop being read it will be continuously read and more time will be devoted into uh reading god's word and then next week we'll be right back on to just juice and water um and this cleansing on our bodies minds and souls and spirits to allow jesus to continue to reveal stuff within us and also another hard thing that i had to grasp is the fact that he knows your heart um this regular shame and guilt and hurt that we feel when we disappoint our heavenly father it's from the devil um and it's just not true i had to be reminded multiple times this week that god loves you for who you are and God, I feel like God was reminding me, like they're the people that was that surrounded me, that God knows your heart. Uh, the fact that you are doing this right now, the fact that you are showing him your love consistently is, is him understanding that you are trying your hardest and your hardest is different in every way. Someone's hardest might be taking a break from social media. Someone's hardest might be not eating for 60 days. I have no idea who's doing that, but someone's hardest is different that doesn't make yours less any less equal so also another perspective to keep in mind because fasting definitely made me happier like i definitely was so happy to wake up every morning and be in purpose and know that i'm doing something above myself know that i'm doing something for god and so that i can get closer to god because fasting is truly for you to get closer with God and to know that I was truly repenting for my sins and asking for forgiveness was also a very big thing for me and so I definitely think that everyone should go into it looking like that but the just know the devil will try to change your mind and let you and try to tell you that you're insignificant like what you're doing is can be done by someone else or better by someone else and you have to let those thoughts go. I mean, I'm not saying that I fully let those thoughts go, but <laughs> I'm trying and just trying and training your mind and your heart to flow is very hard, but you can get there. Um, also, a realization is the fact that God is very serious about the way we live our, we live our lives. So there was multiple parables. Um, there's multiple parables in Matthew and I realized that there's so many things like uh, Matthew 5 verse 37 where it says all you need to say is simply yes or no anything beyond this comes from the evil one so God was saying don't make oaths I make promises every day and I did not realize that I did not know that I actually shouldn't be making promises because it's useless. It's literally useless. Making promises is saying that I am fully in control of what God has made and what God is in control of. And I am not in control of that. I'm not. I make plans. I don't promise myself plans, but I make plans hoping that they align and praying that they align with what God wants me to do. But despite that, God will consistently be the priority now sometimes i do get lost and like we said in previous episodes that as a sheep i will get lost and so just knowing that is also very hard i'm i feel like i'm about to sneeze my dad told me to edit that out but i'm holding my nose instead also he talks about love your neighbor and your enemy i do not i have not been doing that i'm doing it but I have not been doing that and I'm fine with saying that I've not been doing that. Um, but also he was talking about prayer and he was like, don't talk so much while you pray. God already knows your heart. God already knows what you want from him and what you, what you need. And so he said to pray the Our Father prayer. And I was just like, you know, when last have I prayed that prayer? And so... I think I'm gonna pray right now. I know he said to pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees it, what is done, secret will reward you. I am in a room, my door is closed, so I will pray. So, our father in heaven, how be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. And so I just encourage you to always say the Lord or try to say the Lord's Prayer as often as you can. Um, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. Now me and my brother, in my opinion, were beefing. And so I was not forgiving him. There's a lot of people that I wasn't forgiving. And that night when I read the scripture, I realized, okay, it's time. There's nothing that important that I should be holding it in, uh, lowering my shoulders um, and holding things back just because. And so I real with that realization, I decided, you know, just let it go, leave it be, um, and forgive. And also as a reminder of what we fight for, our treasures in heaven, those are very important. And the fact that no one can serve two masters, and that's right. I still listen to worldly music. I know it's horrible. I try to I try to do the clean versions, but now I'm going to do the clean versions because it really is like you choosing two masters or you are not being able to decide between two masters and that's right like either you'll hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money i try not to serve money i think money is very dispensable but that's not really a good mindset either um but i do spend money i don't really covet money like some people do <laughs> but that's okay if you covet money you know we all come from different backstories. It's not okay if you covet money, but God understands why you're coveting money. Hopefully you get out of it. Hopefully you just save and not covet. And hopefully you don't like worship the stock stock markets. <laughs> but um, it also reminded me of how much God loves us. Uh, there was uh, Matthew 6, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? The answer is no. I can't add an hour to my life at, at all. So why am I always worrying? Um, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So put God as priority and after you do that, worry about what you wear. And that can be seen as just waking up in the morning and reading the Bible and then looking for what to wear. Because <laughs> he knows that you need it. He knows you need money. He knows you need shelter. He knows you need food. He knows you need all of these things. And the more that I'm saying this, the more that I'm realizing that he knows that I'll want these things during my past. Is the fact that I'm denying myself and denying my flesh as hard as I can to to give that to him is what makes the fast special. Not really how long it is, not really uh, how many temptations I can swat away, but truly the fact that I am willing to deny myself my flesh and give him time and love. So, that's my two cents. But also judging others. Like, these are just snippets of the multiple things. Because Matthew has, like, 28 chapters. And, like, going through all of this is just a lot. Because obviously, you know, guys, we have our throughout the Bible. And we're going to go through each and every one of these chapters. But, once again, in Matthew 12, verse 12. How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Like, there were so many great things here that Jesus did did and showed that you know changes your perspective forever but the also one of the things that the, the parables brought light to me was the fact that i was being choked uh you know he was talking about the parable with the sower and the seed and the seed that fall upon the thorns and started to grow because it heard the word but the thorns or whatever what it allowed in its life kept allowing it to choke it and bring it back down or kill it and so that was something that i realized you just need to be able to focus on um parables of weed the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast like there was so much good 
stuff and I actually encourage you to read Matthew is and all of the parables because um, obviously some were scary like one was the parable of the net which actually uh, talked about God coming and the signs of God coming um, and I realized in a lot of these parables he was just like listen when it when uh, once the again the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish when it was full the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fishing baskets, but threw the bad away. I do not want to be the bad fish. I do not want to be the fish that gets thrown back into the water. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And honestly, I am scared. Like, moment of vulnerability. I am scared whether or not I will be the one that is thrown to the, the wayside or carried up with God. And I am hoping daily that I am the one that joins God in the kingdom and that I am the one that makes him proud and spreads his word to the best of my abilities, whether it's reaching six, seven, a thousand, ten thousand people. I just want to be. The whole goal is to get to the kingdom of God. And I think that was lost like it gets lost in the midst of social media and posting and making sure that it's hurt even though these are the things that are required to spread the word it's especially during these times where media is so important it just was lost and like even like slight discrepancies of me capitalizing the c in child of god when i write it out i was just like why am i capitalizing a c the only thing that should be capitalized here is God. And I might, yes, I am the child of God. He says that multiple times. He said, blessed are the peacemakers because they are children of God. He talks about bringing the children to God. Don't move them away. And so I just wanted to refine that. I wanted to find it again and remember that, yeah, I am the child of God, but the, the of God, whose child am I, is the most important. The gift is cool, but the gifter is more important. Um, and we see that in Matthew as well. But I'm not going through the whole chapter of Matthew today. Uh, I actually was going like above my time because I just really was passionate about talking about this week. But I'm excited to talk about next week as well as the week when I get back on and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I can't wait for the next one next week. I'm so excited. Actually, I might post two this week cause I'm feeling good. Oh, well not, I'm feeling good. I just feel like it's good. But anyway, I will see you guys next week. Stay hopeful, faithful and the amazing child of God for the amazing Heavenly Father. I'll see you bye. And I'll see you YouTube people later. You guys get to see all my facial remarks, so I think that's actually pretty funny and fun. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>